National Road Safety Assessment underway. CARICOM meet in Dominica to strategize the meeting's sustainable development goals and 21 parents graduate from Ministry of Education Parenting Program. Thank you for joining us on National Focus. I'm Kimani Serja. And I'm Priska Julian. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. Child abuse is unacceptable. Child abuse is not cultural, it is criminal. And one child abuse is one too many. For more information on child abuse or to report suspected cases on child abuse, contact the Social Welfare Division on 33 Great Marlborough Street or call 266-3020 or 266-3080. Welcome back. The Ministry of Public Works has launched a National Road Safety Assessment Project. This week, 200 kilometers of the island's main road network will be assessed. The assessment is being conducted by UK-registered charity International Road Assessment Program, IRAP, using the services of Servicios Mexicanos Ingenieria Civil or CIMIC. Personnel of the Ministry of Public Works will receive training to evaluate the findings. Over the next six to nine months, International Road Assessment Program, IRA, along with Road Assessment Services Limited, RASL, will be working with the Ministry of Public Works and Ports to evaluate the safety of Dominica's main road network. Approximately 200 kilometers of road network will be surveyed using a specially equipped vehicle as part of the exercise. Additionally, engineers and technicians of the Ministry of Public Works and Ports will be exposed to the various tools used for data capture and processing. IRAP's aim is to curb road fatalities and injuries all over the world. Roads are made safe for motorists, pedestrians, cyclists and motorcyclists. Edwards says that road fatalities in Dominica have increased between 2009 and 2013. According to the Global Status on Road Safety 2015, Dominica had a 120% increase in road fatalities between 2009 and 2013. Many of these fatalities and serious injuries are preventable. The Road Safety Assessment will guide the prioritization of road projects to yield the greatest impact on road safety. The team was originally on island to conduct a road network safety assessment to guide the design of the Lubia to Bagatelle Road, funded under the Department for International Development Fund, DFID, through the Caribbean Development Bank. Additionally, given the fact that the exercise would require mobilization of a consultant to the island, government decided to take the opportunity to carry out a road safety assessment of the entire main road network. According to the Global Status on Road Safety 2015, Dominica had a 120% increase in road fatalities between 2009 and 2013. Many of these fatalities and serious injuries are preventable. The road safety assessment will guide the prioritization of road projects to yield the greatest impact on road safety. IRAP uses a star rating system that rates roads from 1 to 5, with 1 star being the most unsafe. According to IRAP, star ratings can be raised by providing proven safety features like pedestrian crossings, safe intersection layouts, safety barriers and road markings. The organization's aim is for countries to have three-star or better roads. It is anticipated that reports of the survey and recommendations from this assessment will be forwarded to government for action. The Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the Maho constituency, Rayburn Blackmore, on Sunday revealed his intentions to ensure that Canefield is at its finest for visual appeal.
During a town hall meeting, the Honorable MP addressed beautification, removal of derelict vehicles and the construction of a river defense wall, among other initiatives. He announced that he has secured additional assistance to facilitate the beautification process. We have provided five additional persons under the beautification program to assist the Urban Council in order to keep the grass properly um, caught and actually to ensure that the place is kept clean. We will procure the, the plants and to ensure that they are planted and to actually beautify the community and to add more value to your property. The Honorable Maho MP also committed to liaising with stakeholders to address the issue of derelict vehicles in Canefield. He called on owners of abandoned vehicles to take the first step. That responsibility has to be placed back on you, the people of Canfield, and on the Urban Council. So I will play my part, and I will liaise and work with all the relevant authorities and agencies to ensure that the legal requirements are met. So to tag those vehicles and the owners, I'm calling on you to voluntarily liberate the roads and the side of the streets voluntarily because they will be tagged and towed to your cost, at your cost, my, my, my dear friend, very, very soon, I promise you. Tropical storm Erica eroded the football complex behind auto trade, causing massive erosion at the Canfield housing scheme leading up to River Estate. Honorable Blackmore revealed plans to address this area. We have already done the design and a contractor has been recommended for the construction of a new retaining wall in Canfield housing scheme just next to Mr. Bless's home. That has to be done almost right now before the hurricane season starts. We also have identified four critical areas in the river, in the upper river estate area that need urgent dredging. And very soon, you shall see the commencement of that activity. The minister appealed to the residents of Canfield to work with the government and the council to execute these tasks. Meantime, a promise made by the Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the Mao constituency, Raven Blackmore, of a truck for the Canfield Urban Council has been fulfilled. The truck was handed over to the council on Tuesday. Honorable Blackmore pledged his continued support to the constituency. I'm looking forward, therefore, to continuing working with the Urban Council to ensure that the people of Canfield benefit from the services that the government has to offer. Canfield is an urban area, and therefore we have a responsibility to ensure that Canfield is always kept clean. In that regard, therefore, I feel very much happy here today because it has been a number of years since um, requests have been made to the Member of Parliament for the trial. And I think that we go a long way as a heard from the chairperson in actually assisting the council to better execute its mandate. Chairman of the Canfield Urban Council, Maxime Powell, expressed gratitude. Council is indeed elated for this much needed equipment at this time, especially given the issues that are surfacing with the transportation of waste from communities island-wide. The Canefield community has over the years been experiencing payment of large sums of monies for transportation of garbage. And as I speak, ladies and gentlemen, the council was owing in excess of $15,000 to private truckers for garbage disposal. We know that one truck will not immediately solve all the challenges. However, it is a start and we will work assiduously towards procuring a second truck in the near future. He cautioned employees of the council. I want to call on the staff who will be utilizing the truck, the drivers and sanitation workers, to take care of the equipment like you would do with your personal property. Please note that the truck is to do the community's work and should, and should be parked in the designated places designated place, sorry, 
at the close of the working day. 21 parents now have the skills necessary to be effective, empathetic and empowered parents after graduating from the Ministry of Education's Let's Talk Parenting program. The Let's Talk Parenting program is an outreach component of the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development through Health and Family Life Education. The three-month program was coordinated by HFLE officer Rena John Charles. The Ministry of Education holds the position that parental involvement in children's school life is an important key to the child's overall success. Research is showing that students with parents who are involved in their children's school life have fewer behavioral problems, better academic performance, and are more likely to complete high school than those students whose parents are not involved. She stated that it is the Ministry of Education's objective to ensure the success of all children, hence the launching of the Let's Talk Parenting program, which has successfully run for the last two years. The program outreaches parents and guardians through HFLE, not only to teach and encourage them on how to be involved in their children's school life, but it also teaches valuable skills and lessons on different issues like how to discipline, how to help children with homework and studying, morals and values, child protection, um, domestic violence, mm -hmm. abuse, um, building positive relationships, and, and building self-esteem in children, just to name a few. No longer should parents and guardians abdicate their responsibilities of teaching and learning to the school. The research is showing a strong partnership between home and school to foster success in children. John Charles observed a thirst for knowledge on how to be effective parents among the parents of the Rosa Primary School. She, however, encouraged the participation of more fathers in the program. Senior Education Officer in the Ministry of Education, Robert Gist, described the topics covered during this program. Parental involvement, celebrating your child's worth, um, helping with homework, child protection, self-esteem, domestic violence, child sexual abuse, um, effective communication with their children, morals and values, and use of IMIS. That's the Education uh, Management Information System. That's, where, that's our new style of reporting um, your child's performance. I hope that it will not just stay within the walls of Russo Primary School, but you actually got something that will help you be a better parent. In her address, Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Chandler Hyacinth, commended the participating parents. I want to commend you, the parents, for being here, for showing commitment, for availing yourself, making time to be part of this parenting program. I know in some circles it's always difficult to get parents to commit and to come to a program. And I want to celebrate with you your, your commitment and your end to this program. And I want to congratulate you on your achievement. She gave her ministry's commitment to ensuring the continuation of the program. The Ministry of Education will continue in the different ways that we can to show support for such programs, especially where we see parents involved, parents are commitment, committed, parents are there. And you know, when we have programs such as this, one of the things we appear why, why parents continue or persons continue is because the program is interesting, because it is lively. And we know Ms. John Charles has that kind of personality to make the thing lively. So it will continue to be so. So we want to thank everyone for their support and we want to ask you to shout the news to others. Parent Veronique George shared her experience. The Let's Talk Parenting program, as a parent and participant, was a program that was well executed by all the different individuals, individuals who lectured who lectured myself and all the other parents on the various topics. We saw every topic as important. 
there was a learning experience in every topic. I can speak today on behalf of, the, of all the parents, all the other parents who participated, that this program has, a, has equipped us to be better parents as being good communicators, listeners, supporters, loving and respectful parents to our children. These characteristics, as we enhance them, will enable us to, de to develop our children and, to, be, and to, to make them become model citizens in our community. You're watching National Focus more when we return. When you think about it, food is life. That's why people come to Dominica. They don't only come for the waterfall or the scenery or the view, but it's the flavor. Sometimes it is just what they can taste. The flavors that we have here, you can't find anywhere in the world. They are truly unique. I've been in business 17 years, and I see so many guests come and go. My business is to put a smile on their face and something good in their belly. Everything we serve here is local. It comes from all over Dominica. So we get fresh lettuce or vegetable or fish from San Sauve, all our product from the farm. Sometimes go on the farm and help them pick. The uniqueness of the experience is in how authentic it is. I heard the um, taxi driver promoting my plantain chips. I said, that's the best plantain chips you can ever have. I don't have to put on TV. <laughs> Money is not everything, but leaving customer with a smile, friendly service, and they will come back. This is the real Dominica. I'm just proud to be a part of it. My name is Maurice Smith. They call me Rudy. Tourism is my business. Welcome back. On Monday, statisticians representing a number of CARICOM countries came together at the Fortune Hotel to develop core indicators for meeting the requirements necessary for achieving the sustainable development goals of CARICOM. Addressing the opening ceremony, Director for Regional Statistics of the CARICOM Secretariat, Dr. Philomen Harrison, explained that the core developed at this series of meetings will serve different organs of CARICOM. It was a decision of the SCCS that technical work is required to develop this core and therefore this meeting is first of all to establish right, this, um, this technical working group as Prima said and to arrive at a more robust recommendation on the core um, for further review and to gain approval at the different levels. The standing committee of course um, and the organs of, of CARICOM like the Council for Trade and Economic Development and so forth. On the agenda of the three-day workshop was the forming of a technical working group. The technical working group will also be responsible for improving the statistical data available for the achievement of CARICOM Sustainable Development Goals. Dr. Harrison says the movement to improve on the quality of data provided can be seen as a data revolution, one deemed to be critical by the United Nations. The high-level panel of eminent persons in the report to the Secretary General of the UN um, saw the critical need to improve the quality of statistics and information available to citizens and to enable the achievements of the SDGs. Right? So they, they saw the need for a data revolution. The seven islands represented at this workshop were Antigua, Barbados, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Jamaica, Suriname and Dominica. The representatives sought to address all statistical indicators developed prior to this workshop in an effort to decide which indicators are more relevant for achieving the SDGs of small island developing states within CARICOM. To commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, a special church service was held at the Roseau Seventh-day Adventist Church under the theme of celebrating the past, embracing the future. In attendance were His Excellency, the President of the Commonwealth of Dominica, Charles Savre, and Mrs. Savre, Her Ladyship Justice Bernice Stevenson, Justice Victoria Charles Clark, Registrar Ozzy Walsh, President of the Bow Association, Mary Roberts, invited judges, registrars, magistrates, and lawyers. 
Representative of the Administration of the Eastern Caribbean Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, Pastor Drew Morey, addressed the ceremony. What you do ensures the stability of society, and as a result of that, your function is essential to the eternal principles that we as human beings hold there, the principles of justice, the principles of equality, and the, the, the principle of equity. And so even as we, we come today, your, your, what you do says to us that we can come together, and we can come together and we can reason. And out of this reason, justice can prevail. Pastor Morey encouraged the ECSC in their mission to ensure justice within the region. And you've done 50 years of service, and there are many more years to come. And in essence, what we pray is this, that the other 50 years that are coming will be better than the first. And that this sense of justice would galvanize us as a people so that we could, we could trust your word. We could, we, could, we could trust the values that you're supposed to espouse. And as you do that, you would give us hope. Hope not just in the return of justice in, the term, in terms of the establishment of God's government, but even while we wait, in human element, we can find sincerity, we can find honesty, we can find justice, we can find equity. The Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court was inaugurated on February 27, 1967, replacing the Supreme Court of the Windward and Leeward Islands. The Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court has jurisdictions in Anguilla, Antigua, Barbuda, the British Virgin Islands, the Commonwealth of Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Montserrat. And finally, this news time outstanding graduate from the University of the West Indies, Dominica Open Campus, class of 2016, Matilda Popo, has endorsed youth mentorship as a goal for all of society. Popo received first class honors in Bachelor of Science in Social Sciences Studies at the UE Open Campus. During her address, she stated that youth work is everybody's business and that the private and public sectors should get involved. She maintains that urgent assessments of young people in various settings should be conducted to realize their needs. Too many of our young people are becoming recidivists. Many are immersing themselves in drugs and violence. We need to take proactive measures in order that we can save our youth. Popo is a job developer and motivator at the Youth Development Division. She stated the importance of creating safe environments for youth to transition healthily to adulthood. We have to inculcate the positive youth development theory, which indicates that we have to engage, support, and empower our youth. She called on the private sector to pledge their support to youth endeavors. Engage them because they have great potential. Allow them to be part of the decision-making process especially in matters concerning them. Let us stop incorporating them in the decision-making process in a decorative and tokenistic manner, but rather incorporate them fully in order that we can utilize their resources to the fullest. She encouraged her fellow graduates to find creative ways to disseminate the knowledge and skills they have acquired. 35 graduates were recognized at the ceremony on Tuesday at the Fortune Hotel. That's news coming up next, your tip of the day. I love the freedom when I'm out there. Simply put, the war is from shore. None of that out there. And it's my daily bread. I learned it from my dad. My dad is one of the senior guys here who catch the biggest fish around here. And he's top with the red snappers. It's a family thing. I'm the only one fishing right now in the family. Just keeping it going. I enjoy bringing them up, man. <laughs> Sometimes you have a yellowfin tuna, 400 pounds. Man, let me tell you, that's just a joy out there. I enjoy going out there and just holding the big fish. I don't lift weights, I lift fish. The morning of my fishing trip, I would get up, make a little spice tea. Then I come down here, 
I have my GPS, which most fishermen are supposed to have that. Normally I prepare the day before, because whenever you go out there, you must have ice. Ice is a must for preservation of the fish. So I always make sure I have everything the day before. My fish represents me, and I bring good quality fish ashore, simply because the restaurants themselves, they have to show a quality product. Tourism and agriculture go hand in hand, that's what I think. We're all connected, it's, it's like a big machine, and I'm just so proud to be a part of it. My name is Brandon Carlyle, and tourism is my business. If you're interested in running for exercise, here is one thing you should know. All of your runs should start with a warm-up and end with a cool-down. A good warm-up dilates your blood vessels, ensuring that your muscles are well supplied with oxygen. It also raises your muscles' temperature for optimal flexibility and efficiency. By slowly raising your heart rate, the warm-up also helps minimize stress on your heart when you start your run. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash GIS News Dominica and follow us on Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. Live streaming is also available on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I am Priska Julian. And I'm Kimani Seja. Thanks for watching and join us again next time on National Focus.